to be. I'm rushing to get dinner. You know, I can't go all day rushing around and cooking for the Boy Scout meeting Hazel. and then come home. Hazel, I'm not trying to rush dinner. I just this came in to... This is about the trillionth meal I've got today. I just came in to tell you you don't have to get dinner for us tonight. I won't? Why? Well, because I'm tired and feel like getting away from it all for one night. But I've started dinner already. <laughs> then unstarted. Does Missy know that you're going out tonight? Naturally, she's upstairs getting dressed now. Well, after all, I think she'd be too tired. She's been working in the shop all day. She wants to get away from it all, too. You might have trouble getting in any place on a Saturday night. Well, I'll take that chance. Oh. Well, what about poor little Harold staying home all alone after he's worked so hard all day, too? Harold's going along with us. Oh. Well, uh, what about Mr. Griffin? Wasn't he hinting about coming here to dinner tonight and bringing some big wheel acquaintance? He wasn't hitting, he was demanding, as usual. Besides, it's because of Mr. Griffin I wanted to get away. I've been on the phone so much today, trying to contact property holders on that senior citizen project of his, I'm beginning to look like a telephone. One of these days, I'll open my mouth, and all you'll hear is the busy signal. All right, Mr. B, if you wanna, you and Missy wanna go out on a Saturday night and buck the crowds and get poor food and, and have indigestion, it's okay with me. We'll just stay home alone and have the bicarbonate of soda handy. Well, of course, Hazel, if you don't want to go out to some nice restaurant and buck the crowds and stand in line getting indigestion with us, uh, you don't have to go along. You mean I'm invited? Naturally. Well, for Pete's sake, what are we waiting for? We got plenty of bicarbonate of soda to go around. <laughs> George? Oh, let's just drive around till we come to a place that looks interesting. Maybe some little cafe that's small and cozy and has good food. Sounds wonderful. Maybe Italian food. Oh, I could go for some spaghetti and meatballs tonight. <laughs> Me too. The kind of place that has red and white checkered tablecloths and soft music. Hazel, you know such a place? No, but Charlie Calati does. He told me about it. Well, where is it? You mean he didn't give you one of them that says... Antonio's Little Italy? Well, I haven't seen Charlie in a long while. He's been scattering them around like they was confetti. Charlie must really like the place. Oh, sure. He says that when we go there, be sure and give Tony his love and tell him that he sent us. Well, you must know Tony real well. Oh, sure. Tony is his nephew. <laughs> Come on, everybody. What are we waiting for? Yeah. <laughs> it's down the highway a little, Mr. B. You want me to drive? Hazel, we'll both drive as usual. Me in the front. You in the back. Oh. <laughs> My, what a charming little place. I don't see any cars. The lights are on inside. Well, maybe it's just too early for the dinner trade. Wonder why anyone would open a restaurant way out here. Well, if the food's good, the people will find it. Know what they say about you build a better mousetrap, Mr. B. Sure, but who wants mice? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're the only customers. Good. We won't have to stand in line. Charlie ought to scatter some more cards around. <laughs> well, personally, I'm glad it isn't crowded. I could use a little peace and quiet. Yeah. At least Mr. Griffin will be able to track me down here. <laughs> uh, well, no cooking tonight. Not that I mind cooking, but it's nice to have somebody wait on you once in a while. Wish we could have brought Smiley along. Oh, well, we'll bring him home a pizza in a bag. What's everyone going to have? Hamburger for me. Oh. Hamburger? Drive 35 miles just to get a hamburger? Maybe 